everyone. Happy Wednesday. Welcome to Archetype. Welcome back. I was out last week. Um, had like a weird neck strain thing going on, but I am okay now, hopefully. <laughs> We're going to get back into it and start drawing and um, also probably start sculpting today, which is a little different than what I normally do, but I'll show you guys kind of why I'm going to do that. So... <clears throat> Um, we're starting our new character or archetype, uh, this month. So, um, I think someone in the chat last time, hello, okay, Sato, um, someone in the chat last time was talking about, um, aliens and, uh, not the xenomorph alien, although I do work on some stuff like that. I have worked on a game <clears throat> in the past that was alien based, but xenomorph. But um, I think someone was also asking about, you know, how do I approach doing more realistic type alien, you know, maybe skin and doing stuff like that. So I'm taking a bit of a detour from our normal, um, not, not necessarily not stylized, because I, I personally think even realistic stuff is still stylized. It's just all about how you, you know, put the final touches on it, whether or not it looks like something from overwatch or if it looks like a like an alien you know um you know like a xenomorph xenomorph shapes are very very stylized um it's just what the context that we see it in that makes it feel realistic but that being said um so i figured i would sculpt today and start blocking out some you know fun creature kind of alien concepts um I think the biggest thing about an alien as far as archetype goes is there's supposed to be kind of like a level of intelligence that we're supposed to feel with the character. Um, so we'll be kind of diving into that. I feel like there's a fine line between doing just like, you know, creepy creature design versus maybe something that feels like it's got a bit more thought behind why it does what it does. Um, so yeah. So I'll be sitting here and drawing away. I'm going to draw a little bit, but um, I wanted to show a fun tool. This was something I was sketching just as a warm up, but um, a fun tool for kind of coming up with like weird alien things is don't underestimate the power of a symmetrical drawing. I feel like it works a different side of our brain um, to kind of come up with like weird, cool, fun shapes like a hammerhead type shape. I just feel like it's a really easy, fun way to um, break out of maybe how you would normally draw. And it kind of puts a lot of pressure off of drawing and puts more pressure on, um, you know, designing, which I think is pretty fun. Again, anything to, to just kind of turn your brain off to be able to um, think about... Oh, it doesn't do symmetrical erasing. Well, there's a shortcut for that. But yeah, you can easily start, you know, coming up with... Um, Some weird alien shapes to start. Hold on, I have to check on. Sorry, I had to check some audio stuff real quick. Alrighty, we're getting there. I'll probably just try to find like some sort of like fun head shape or bust. Um, and then from there I can kind of take that and do something else. Um, So 
One second. Okay. A little technical difficulties will be fast. So well. There we go. And we're back to drawing. So one thing that I want to do with this um, idea is I feel like it's really easy to go basically make like super alien shape. Um, <laughs> Uh, I feel like there's some common tropes when making, you know, alien creatures. One would be, you know, doing, you know, maybe the big headed, um, you know, your classic big headed alien kind of vibe, right? Um, another really good one, and I don't think it's, it's nothing wrong, but I think uh, bugs are really common too. You know, if you look online, you'll find Tons of people kind of trying to inspire um, their alien designs through bug shapes and things. And it's very obvious to see as to why. Um, bugs are very, very alien to us as far as, you know, their, their bone structure, because they don't really have a bone structure. They're like exoskeletons, right? Um, so it's really, really kind of easy to, to take that and manipulate it into a more, you know, kind of humanoid type character. And then you get something that feels very off world um, just because they are so unique from, from like what we normally see. Right. And this is just me kind of doing some shape sketching stuff. You know, I'm not trying to be super crazy with it. I think I think an important thing with when you're sketching out, you know, these these types of shapes or just starting a new project in general is uh start getting something on paper that can kind of lead you down different paths. This uh is always kind of nice. If you sit there and think for too long, then you're not going to get anything done. So it's really important to kind of just start sketching stuff. Um, start finding shapes that kind of work for you. Because the other big thing too is, you know, if I'm working with a client or whatever, uh, and they go, okay, I want, I want you to come up with the new awesome alien for this brand new, you know, feature film or whatever it's going to be. If I sit down and draw an alien, chances are you and I will probably draw an alien that feels really similar. We're probably going to draw an, a very, very similar looking alien. Um, and that's not a bad thing. It's just that usually your first idea is every, is also everyone else's first idea. Um, so a big thing is to kind of get past those first ideas. And the only way to do that is by to sketch them out, you know, sketch out those first ideas, get them out of your head and let them lead to, you know, other different things. And I think that's a, that's a more interesting way to try to get, try to go down the road. It's kind of like going down a beaten path, but keep going until it's no longer beaten. And it's new, <laughs> right? If you just keep walking and you just keep moving. Eventually you'll get to a not so beaten path. And that's kind of the idea. Um, with this kind of sketching. So it's one of those things where you're trying to push, push some anatomy, push some shapes around and get something and don't spend too long on, you know, one thing. It's, uh, that's another really big one that I see a lot of students or first people trying to draw um, designs is don't get married to anything. Just do it and then um, move on to the next one, you know, and try to come up with something else. And I'll have some reference up. So right now I have um, 
some reference of some sea creatures and I have some reference of uh, some birds and stuff as well and some apes so trying to come up with you know some cool I feel like that's where most of your more original designs will come from just trying to look at stuff that you wouldn't normally think to come up to look at and then kind of try to combine those things this thing's probably gonna be kind of scary but that's all good i like scary scary's cool i didn't realize how much of the um i think it's called the gal galil gareel it starts with a g it's a type of baboon and man when you look them up it's basically real life predator um and it's awesome so definitely don't be afraid to you know go explore on nat geo wild or something <laughs> and find some really cool creatures you don't see a lot of aliens with fur probably because it's too difficult and annoying but it's cold out in space there's no reason why there wouldn't be fur Creepy lip pulled back. Maybe he's got only one tooth on the on the bottom, so it like sits in the middle of the, these teeth here. No, something weird. Ahmed said, "Hello, can I learn anatomy from practice? Just from." Oh, can you learn anatomy from practice from just reference four hours a day? Um, yeah, absolutely. I don't even know if you need really like a a schedule for it. I actually, what I like to do for um, studying anatomy stuff is make it fun, you know? So if you're, if you want to sit down and get better at anatomy, don't just, you know, go to the classic books, but go to the books and say, you know, what can I do to make this more fun? Um, so I like to do characters or like come up with, you know, if you love like the Ninja Turtles, try to draw, <laughs> do your poses and reference and anatomy, but turn them into Ninja Turtles or something. Um, I think it, I think it's a really important thing to, to keep studying and learning fun. I think a lot of students forget that. You need to make it fun or else you're not going to want to do it. You know, you'll tell yourself, like, I'm going to sketch five hours a day and do all these things and blah, blah, blah. Um, hello from Brazil. Hello. Um, but the moment, you know, you turn it into a chore and not something, you know, fun or something relaxing that you can do, that's when eventually you'll just get burnout. out. Um, so I think it's I think it's really important to uh, remember why why do you want to learn anatomy? What are you doing that is fun for you and learning it that way? Um, so can you learn anatomy by drawing you know four hours a day? Absolutely. Um, I think it's all about studying right and not about studying for a long time. You know, look up. Uh, Bridgman is a really great reference for anatomy lessons. Uh, Andrew Loomis, you know, if you're getting started with the human body is another really good one. This guy's scary, man. <laughs> it's like a weird ape thing coming at you. And you gotta give it forearms, right? Because that's, that's how you know it's an alien. Um, but yeah, the biggest thing that I did to study anatomy is I just, I say the things that I enjoyed and that will keep you wanting to do it over and over and over again, right? And then really it's just time and practice of doing it a lot. Not necessarily doing it a lot in one day, but doing it for a, a, a long duration, right? 
um, that's what's going to make it. Even if you draw an hour a day, you know, if you draw an hour a day for seven days of the week versus the person that's trying to draw four, but then burns out three of the four, you're going to draw, you're going to do more hours. You know, you'll end up in the long run doing more hours. That's a fun creature idea. So we'll keep that one in the, in the bank. Do another one. I'm just having fun at this point. <clears throat> Maybe for actually this one, I might get rid of Cern Tree. Might just try another way to get good, good um, start for designing also is don't stretch yourself out with, you know, perspective, just focus on like a cool um, side profile. There's these really cool birds that have these like crazy feather things. I'm gonna try to incorporate that into this character. Uh, Anthony's saying pretty sweet, pretty sweet, quick concepts and sketching out. Thank you. I appreciate it. Not sure where I'm gonna go with this one yet, but we'll, we'll figure it out. I think it's really all about just finding like interesting shapes, and a lot of those interesting shapes come with studying you know real life stuff um the more you can do that then those the easier those shapes are going to come because you're referencing um things that you've seen before you know even though you're kind of twisting it into something different that's looking too creaturey again my goal here is you know with our with our other one he feels, you know, he's scary, but I, I think if he was to relax his face, I think he could feel intelligent. Like, I, you know, Predator's intelligent, and I'm getting Predator vibes for that one. Um, so again, it's one of those things where it's this really fine balance of... You know, finding intelligence in a, in a thing. And intelligence is a hard one, because it's like, what... For a human audience, we have to relate that to what do humans find intelligent. So that's why I looked up like apes, but I also was like, octopus are also like pretty intelligent, right? Um, so there's like a lot of different weird shape language that we can use to try to come up with you know, something that feels alien, but we also can look at it and go, oh, it's not just like a creature. Um, maybe it's got kills on the front of its face. I'm just kind of warming up, but I, you'll see that I'm going to move over to um, ZBrush fairly quickly. Um, and reason for that is because I wanted to show it's it's really fun and super, uh, not, I don't want to say easy, but it is really easy to conceptualize and like move stuff around and come up with cool ideas um, within ZBrush. Like the iteration process is just so much faster. Um, on something that's, you know, not um, a digital, you know, drawing. So I'm going to switch over in a second. I'm just going to do one last kind of sketch here and then 
there's this like really crazy bird that I found and I, I liked the the shapes. It makes something like super alien and weird. So I was like, I want to try to capture that before. And these are more of just, it's it's kind of like a warm up thing. You know, if you watch any Ian McKay stuff, you'll see that he does tons of warm ups of just like, before you ever start even thinking about an alien, just go out and draw some really weird animals. We have super weird um, animals that stay, you know, right in our backyard all the time. So, important to take a look at, you know, those things. We can turn into like a bat creature. Um, But yeah, don't be married to anything, you know, just kind of have fun with it in the beginning. Um, but you know, do some research, do some studying. Drawing animals is so such a nice way to start because you don't have to think yet. You know, you're just kind of warming up your, your hand to come up with something cool um, later. Maybe give them like a weird beak thing. I like the idea, I'm trying to challenge myself by, because I, like I said, an, like bugs or, you know, just your stereotypical, like, you know, Mass Effect <laughs> alien where it's like, it's just green and has no fur. Um, I'm trying to avoid doing that, not because I don't think they're not successful designs or anything like that, but I think it's a little too... Um, overdone if we do that kind of alien. I'm trying to approach him the way, like, how would I want to, you know, make an alien? I actually kind of like this guy so far. Again, fun shapes. Let me show you what I did. So I took, I have some other alien reference on the side, but um, I was looking at this guy here specifically. So you can see that it turned into like a bat creature, but I really liked these like weird sacks and I liked this like fluffed up you know kind of neck and I turned his the ear the what's normally on here feathers um into ears and then uh where is this, this one has some like really cool like long look at that hairdo it's crazy um and those eyes are awesome uh I might do eyes like that because they're really terrifying um so you know looking up that kind of reference is is super handy um and I'm just taking what, you know, what's already, what I know about animals. I'm just trying to combine. Um, so in that case, maybe it's like a tiny alien. And in order to make him feel tiny, uh, we just have to make the eyes bigger. Right. So then it gets kind of like those eye eye vibes. <laughs> A little bit. Creatures from Dead Space are cool. They are cool. I do like Creatures from Dead Space. Yeah, if you guys know of creatures in films or aliens in films that you guys are like, oh, I love, you know, this design. Um, put it in the chat. I love to hear it. I love to hear it. Some of my most recent favorite ones, I actually really like the aliens from um, Edge of Tomorrow. Those designs are super cool. They're just very weird and different, so I think I think that's a lot of fun. Cool. But yeah, if you guys have some ideas of what you guys like, definitely put them in there. The thing is a classic one. Super creepy and, you know, famous. You doesn't have wings, but I'm thinking of like flying 
lemurs and stuff where I'm like, what if it has, or like gibbons, they have like those really, what if it has these like really long claws that it hangs? It actually uses those as a way to like hang on and grab to trees or whatever it lives on. Um, and so it's got kind of like the shorter, really dexterous hands. But then it's also got these like big kind of grabby I'm still going to play a lot in, in 3D, but... Or maybe we can do something where... Again, doing anatomy that's really weird. his hands are really his feet. Mm. I feel like that's too, that feels just like Sepulveda or something. I mean, maybe you'd have more like bird anatomy for his legs so that way when he swings and jumps he can like land onto perches or something. Big, like flat tail kind of thing for balancing you know it's like a cheetahs or flying squirrels or anything like that they'll have basically they treat their tails like rudders Right? <laughs> and again, intelligence comes from what we can do with the, you know, maybe, maybe they are a lot bigger. So I don't, I'm feeling like he needs to have eyes that are a little more. subtle. It's kind of fun. Ahmed is asking, do you know how to say lighting to be good at it? Um, yeah, lighting is an interesting one. So, you know, if I was to like light this character right now, I can grab like a slightly darker um, shade. You just want to think about, you know, where's your light source coming from? And I think the easiest way to, to sell 3D is think about like where the cast shadows would be first. So, you know, if the light's coming this way, his whole um, kind of like weird bulbous thing is gonna be in the in a cast shadow, and underneath his belly is it gonna be all shadow too, right? Because you're not gonna the light's not gonna hit that. Um, a lot of studying light is just looking and reading it. Uh, real objects, you know, going to a natural history museum is really great because um, they have animals there that are lit really well that don't move. Um, so you can kind of get an idea of how the light works that way. But I think it's important to just keep it to like a two-tone value to start, you know, if, if you can start reading um, 3D form by just two values, like what I'm doing here, right? Um, 
then that's that's a cool lesson learned. That's a good way. It's a good place to start. This would be in shadow. And it tells you just a lot of information about, you know, where, where's the ground plane. His hands kind of turned away from it too, so you probably wouldn't see that. So yeah, it's really important just to start with, you know, what what's going to be casting what. Um, and then from there you can kind of like add more into it and then you can just start adding slightly darker values to give a bit more breakup into things or, you know, where there's like ambient occlusion, which means where light, when two objects come really close to one another, they occlude light. And so you don't, so that's where you get darker areas. Right. And then you can start adding, you know, where, where those hot spots would be on your character. Depending on like what's closest to the light. You can kind of start slowly building stuff that way. Um, and then another thing that helps too is to you know, break it up from the background. So before I add that, you can, um, I can go in here with like a paint bucket tool and pick. I'm kind of fill in this object really quick. I'm doing this very fast for the sake of just like a fun demo since someone asked. But yeah, studying light, another really good one is uh, James Gurney still does this with his paintings is he'll get some, you can just get like epoxy clay or like uh, Sculpey clay and sculpt out a real quick, just little like maquette of what you're doing. Um, and then from there you can actually take, you know, you can pose it and then you can throw a light on it and you can check out how it how it lights um and then you can kind of copy that reference you know and he does that all the time with his paintings um so that way they feel you know physically accurate unfortunately there is no trick to getting better it's just a lot of drawing um so i feel pretty happy with these guys so i'm gonna go ahead and open up um brush. And we're still gonna play around a bit but because I wanted to show you guys the the fun part about you know concepting some ideas in ZBrush um, because it is so fast. So within um, I usually start with a sphere just because it has no edges. So once you have like a sphere in here, it is so easy to start just kind of like pulling stuff out. You know, and I totally recommend, you know, if you're talking about practicing stuff a day, um, a bust a day goes a long way just by, you know, practicing and studying um, and pulling out shapes. You know, this is how you can get your classic kind of weird aliens. Um, You can see how quickly I just pulled out a 3D form. And then if you wanted to, you could easily take this, you know, screen grab it and draw on top of it later in um, in Photoshop, right? So then you then you can keep iterating. Um, kind of think of like Paris for all of this vibes here now. Yeah. 
Maybe like a kind of weird bird beak. It's fun to also just throw in eye placement and see how that changes the design. Right? If I put eye placement here, it's very different than putting eye placement out here. So even just eye placement alone can help um, kind of sell a thing. Or also how, again, how big or small are your eyes? If I make my eyes really big, that changes the scale of this creature. Um, whereas really small eyes will make it feel like a totally different school. And it says, good tip, good vibes. Awesome. I'm all about those vibes. I'm all about the good vibes. Yeah, so don't get too lost in, you know, sculpting too much too soon. Just start, you know, take this now. Um... And then we can duplicate it. And then just start pushing this around. Again. Maybe I'll we'll make ears now. Bring the forehead up. Maybe I'll squish this forward. Like, don't be afraid to just, you know, pull things back. That's what, that's the beauty of Dynamesh. I'll give it like eight fives, like a gorilla type skull. Right, now we have something completely different from what we started with, right? This has got like bird pterodactyl vibes and... Maybe do something like that. Um, very quickly that can turn into something completely different. So this is what I mean about... Um, sometimes 2D is great for tons of things, but for some ideation stuff, it's so handy to be able to just be like, nah, let's just take it, push it, squeeze it, move it around. Um, and get like a totally unique, weird shape. Way faster than I can draw and come up with, you know, a weird shape. Kind of let just happy accidents um, flow into the process. Um, that can be really fun. So then I can duplicate that again. If I don't want something, I can just smooth it away to eventually just kind of get rid of it. Actually, that's it's kind of cool. They're like a goblin shark, but then we can do both waves. Again, going into like maybe some bug vibes or something. But I like this method of, you know, pushing and pulling shapes around to try to find something fun. Um, they're just like super blobby. They can be really whatever, but if you're like, ah, oh, this didn't go in the right direction, you know, it's looking like a weird pterodactyl now. Um, you can just go back to your other ones. Right? So not everyone is going to be great, um, but that's kind of the point is give like options to, you know, keep working on something. Um, 
ground reality if I go in more of a real time type thing and I think about, you know, what I was referencing. I was I was using like a seahorse at one point. See, that image is so great for being able to just go, no, nah, I don't want this, or oh, push and pull that, or oh, move this around. Or if you use something like the snake hook brush very quickly get some crazy tentacles or something I think a lot of this stuff kind of adheres more to the creature side of Making an alien. None of these are feeling overly intelligent to me yet. I haven't done anything in the 3D realm that I've been like, ooh, this is cool. It just really depends on what you're doing. Um, I think I sketched something already that I liked, which is part of the problem. <laughs> I didn't think I was going to find something that I liked in the sketching phase because I was like, oh, I'll show how fun it is to do you know, weird art in. Brush. But you can get, you know, very weird, very Wayne Barlow if you want to go for it. If you don't know Wayne Barlow is, definitely give him a, a look see. But another thing, too, is you can keep building onto something until you're like, what is it that I like about it? What is it that I don't like about it? Um, and what can I do to um, make myself like it? So you know, maybe that all that's a little too much. <laughs> You know, if I'm going, okay, what is it that I like about this? It's like, oh, we can make it kind of like a, you know, squid type thing. So that is what I have in one of my references. And how can I get it to be more interesting? And also, how do I get it to feel intelligent? So, like, one thing we can do to kind of get it there is make sure the eyes are kind of facing forward. A good brow and then maybe like a larger cranium. So a lot of it, you know, if you're like, oh, I don't like Blind Z thing that I'm doing. Try to figure out why. Don't just ditch it um, from the very beginning because you might be surprised where if you just keep kind of working on it a little bit and keep asking yourself like, okay, why don't I like this? Why? How can I make this more interesting? How can I improve it? Um, one, I think it's better for your design instincts to kind of 
come up with a solution. Because, you know, there's going to be plenty of times in the industry, too, where, you know, you can't just give up on an idea because maybe the director likes, you know, wants a squid alien. And you're like, all right, well, I'm just not hitting that squid alien mark. So, you know, what is it about this guy that I can make feel more interesting? Um... You know, it's a lot of trial by fire in that case, in a lot of cases. And so for right now, like my biggest thing is I'm like, oh, I just don't really know what to do with the mouth yet. Um, I think that's where I'm struggling the most. Like maybe it's too long. It feels a little silly when it's too long because making it shorter feel a little better. Making this one shape feel better. You're like, oh, this feels a little more sea creature -y, right? It doesn't have a mouth. Maybe it's just gills, but gills in like an interesting way. So I think it's stuff like that that can kind of help flesh out ideas. You know, like now I'm like, oh, I think I like this more than I did before. Um, doesn't mean it's going to be your favorite, but I think it's important to take the designs that you're like, oh, I don't, I don't like this design, and figure out why and try to fix it. You know, don't just dump it. Because I've also uh, there's a thing that I've also learned in the industry is. Um, the worst design always gets picked. <laughs> That's what people say sometimes. Um, so when like a producer, or someone comes in, they're like, "I love this one." You're like, "Damn it, that that was that was the one that I hated," you know. So try to get all your concepts to be ones that you don't hate. So when they come in, they're like, "I like this one." You're like, "Yeah, okay." Like you know, you have all good ideas. You know, don't don't leave it to them to pick the best one because um, they'll always pick the worst one. Not always, but it's always a good, I think it's a good rule of thumb to not let others pick the best design. And the best way to do that is by being happy with, you know, all of your results. That makes sense. if multiple eyes would be a thing. I don't think it would be. But I don't mind like little nostrils or something up here. That could be kind of cool. More gill things. But yeah, so you can take something like that and be like, cool, I did one. And then move on to, you know, the next one and the next one. Um, this just looks like a dinosaur at this point. But... <clears throat> This one is starting to look more like my initial drawing, so I think I might take this guy and let's see if we can warp him into some sort of 
cool thing. And see, I wasn't thinking of my initial design to have like the big cranium, you know, like the gorilla type skull, but that could be cool. It's kind of all about thinking like, would this be cool or can this work, you know, or just see what happens if you try. Is this music with lyrics for once? I like it. Unless I'm listening to my own music and you guys can't hear that. <laughs> okay, good, you guys can't hear it. I like it. What's your guys' favorite types of music to listen to while you work? Be like, do you need lyrics? I sometimes like listening to stand-up comedy, depending on what I'm doing. Um, I like this very chill music though. Although it depends, I guess it depends on the project I'm working on. You know, if I'm doing, right now I'm working on something that's very like metal sci-fi, so it'd be, you know, I'd be listening to like electronic music or something for that. Um, okay, here's, we're getting lobbed off, here we go. Yours are just, if you can't, I think they don't merge nicely, so. And then in my concept I had, It's like weird, like inflating sack for males. And then I also had a fur spot, so we can just take part of this and extract it. Um, yep. With stuff in the scene, it's always gonna kind of do weird stuff. But now we can take that and. start trying to get those shapes. Yeah, we kind of have the idea of maybe like some sort of like weird bat nose or something.
And I'm gonna split off this um inflating bag for the moment. So I just wanna figure out his um Neck and stuff, and then we can also make a blend shape later to have it like puff out and stuff. It'd be kind of fun. I feel like we can even make his ears move forward. It'd be a lot bigger. Again, going, going bat vibes. I'm always looking at that um, silhouette too. I feel like there needs to be something kind of interesting on his um, forehead but I'm not I'm not sure too sure what yet. Yeah we could do some sort of like plating. Go ahead and bring in an eyeball. goes all the way back. We could do something kind of maybe interesting where this, the fur like that bird had uh, flares out. throw a shiny material onto the eyes. We can also some eyes. The front, it looks like he has a mustache. He does. Super epic mustache. When we could see 
we'll see. We will see. I think uh, adding some like more fur and stuff along the the back and stuff will help. And then again, like these seahorses have like uh, these like little tendrils, so maybe we'll make it kind of like super delicate looking. Moles also have, you know, kind of similar. So angry now. And it's still really important to think of skull structure too. I'm trying to picture, you know, where is his um, where's his jaw, and where's it hinge? Where's that zygomatic arch? Where's his temple muscle that's going to go down into his jaw so that we can actually open his jaw, right? Like all those things are still very important to think about while designing, even if at first, you know, we create really weird ideas. Um, Making sure that he feels anatomically accurate is a good thing. I'm sure we put in a lot of depth for where that ear goes back into. Let's go back this ear. Actually, I think I think there's a cat that has two ears. I think I want to put this now. Yeah, <laughs> it's super weird, but it's a thing. There's this cat here, um, so cute, but it was born with two ears. Which is kind of interesting, but the shape is super cool. Um, so I think I'm actually going to steal that. So we'll have... You know, one... Big ear. Again, we can widen it, kind of shorten it down. Long part of the no, I think so. There's a um, um, an Instagram called Anatomica Science. I think that's what her name is. Um, and she actually looks up really bizarre um, findings in nature of like you know weird anatomical 
mishaps and stuff. And I think that's one of them is this cat with two ears. There's too many pictures of it <laughs> online for all of them to be completely photoshopped. I think um, they're born four ears, but I think uh, I think they said that they're not functional, like only the back ones are. Um, yeah, if you follow Anatomica Science, you'll find some really weird things that happen in, in nature. Thank you, Noman Ninja. Now we have that. Uh, I'm just gonna take one of these other ones. It doesn't matter. I'm gonna lower the resolution by like a bunch. I just need like a body to start with. That's all I'm doing. We'll start blocking out. And again, I'm kind of referencing some bat, some bird, um, a bit of ape. So trying to make sure that you're, you know, combining a lot of interesting real life creatures can lead to more interesting results. He's got like a dorsal, so when he glides... So yeah, I'm picturing him like kind of flying and then um, like hooking himself and kind of gliding. A bit of like a gliding kind of creature. Also kind of setting up, um, not two rib cages, but I'm kind of trying to set up something so that way I can make... Oops. Yeah. So I can make two arms. Like I have in my reprints. Again, just dynamishing and grouping and moving stuff. I can take this guy and do it again. Let's do it once for now. I'm not sure if I'll, I'm not sure exactly what his anatomy is going to be yet. And then now I'm going to set up for the other arm. And this one I want it to be a little wider in the shoulder. And then again, I can take 
this guy. Cut him in half. And I can move this down. Symmetry. There we go. I'm gonna thin this out a lot. And again, it's important just to get shapes in. Kind of start figuring out and uh, symmetry. You can kind of start figuring out how that anatomy is gonna, you know, warp and work. I'm gonna split the head off from the neck so that way I have the neck to sculpt on. So I'll say split and then kind of mesh that because I already have pretty high res for. Now I can kind of start sculpting all, all of this. And again, if I need to like, um, you know, move the arms out or something, I can now mask everything. That's why I like keeping all separate pieces for now. Got more animal shoulderish anatomy than um, human. So, oh, Kaiser, you you're so right. I do have to save. Where are we saving it? Archetype. Oh, uh, alien. Oh, one. I swear, that guy needs. You need like a gift card for saving my butt every time. That could kind of make interesting anatomy. It's having these like two scapulas that are kind of working in weird tandem with one another. Again, as I start to figure out the body, a lot of my um, choices come from knowing animal anatomy. With really weird, like, pectoralis muscles. This is why I like keeping everything kind of separate for as long as possible, because then it's really easy to edit and make these like weird changes.
Maybe this is uh, my weird version of man bat. <laughs> there you go. I think that's definitely easily one of my favorites. So I'm gonna pull this out. So there's some like weird unfit anatomy. Again, it doesn't have to be super anatomically accurate or anything. It's a made-up creature. Um, I'm using real no knowledge of anatomy to help me, um, you know, figure out certain things. But if there's, you know, shapes or something that's like, this is just kind of weird or cool, um, you know, you can also go for that. No one's answered the question of some aliens that they like in movies. District 9. District 9 has cool aliens. Very bug, obviously, but super cool. And you'll see later how I sculpt a lot of this stuff out. Um, I kind of want to hint at like lat muscles or pectoralis muscles going up in here. Some big trap muscles for sure. There's major and minor muscles, and then yeah, there's the lat muscles. Tomorrow War Aliens? Yeah, those ones are good ones. I think, um, oh, what's his name? Not Ken. Is it Ken Bartholomew that did those ones, or is it... There's another dude I'm thinking of, too, that's done, that did those designs, and they're really cool. Movies are right. Totally worth watching though for aliens. I don't know if I like this spot. I think I, think I might just turn it into a piece sternum. It's a lot smaller. I think I want the anatomy to be more in control. Or more of a priority, I should say. Oh, The Mist had some cool ones, if you guys have never seen that one. Spoiler, kind of, but that movie's old now. You guys should go see it. Just go watch it. There's some other aliens that are cool. E.T. E.T. is a cool alien. I just watched Iron Giant again the other day. He's technically an alien, even though he's a robot. I like the idea of long, really long palm, maybe. Kind of. 
grab stuff. And nothing says aliens like, you know, not enough fingers, so. How many fingers do we give them? We give them three, but then we give them like a weird tiny pinky. Grip trees better or something. Adrian the demon. Hello. He says this is dope. And I say thank you. I try. Doesn't look cool yet, but we're getting there. By next week, it will look cool. That's the hope. It's pretty demon-like almost now. We'll add some fur and stuff to him. But he doesn't feel... At least I hope. I don't want him to feel like just a creature. I want him to feel like he is more intelligent. I think that Billy Goat goatee is kind of helping. It's like Black Phillip or something. Thank you, Adrian. I appreciate it. That again. I'm just gonna duplicate the arm and then I'm gonna flip it around. Whoops, not with symmetry on though. Now I've got a leg. I mean, a leg is really just a backwards arm, guys. I think about it. Or is an arm backwards leg? I art. I smart. That is the frailest, tiniest little leg ever. Put some meat on them bones. legs all like crouched up maybe we could do that because that would help sell no, lean him forward So looking at it, I want to make sure that his head also needs to get smaller, or his body needs to get bigger. That's probably a little better. And then we can thin him out a little bit more. He's got salad fingers. <laughs> um, yeah, it doesn't end up looking like a pelvis Adrian, right? So smart, so smart. Uh, Jay is asking, what, uh, what's it like working as a senior character artist versus a character artist? 
Um, senior character arts just gives you more responsibilities. You know, if they're char just characters, um, then you're kind of their lead or their example. Um, so it's a lot more responsibility as far as teamwork and stuff um, goes, for sure. Um, a lot of it too can be just your responsibilities are usually more higher level or you'll take on the art that's, you know, trickier, whatever it may be. Um, that's also pretty common, but usually it's more of a leader. It's more of a leadership thing more than anything else. Um, one thing that one of my principal artists used to tell me was, uh, the only difference between a character artist and a senior artist is the time it takes to do something. That's really it. So it's not really a matter of, um, quality as it is just about hitting deadlines really fast. Trying to get this. So that's usually the main stuff is the deadline stuff. And then we can take, I'm going to do it again. His hands are also feet. doesn't use his feet that much. Picture them more of just like tiny little perchy things. Let me put a thumb on the outside. I'm duplicating it down over there. You see that? Jay, no problem. If you have any questions, you're always more than welcome to ask. I forgot that I had this two-year cat up on my other monitor. That is what I'm here for, though. If you have other questions that are not about art, I will try to answer them, but I'm just gonna make up my own rules. I'll make up my own answers. If you're right or wrong, you never know. hands it's not that they're too long i think they're too big they're bugging me they're also not sculpted at all but they're definitely yeah I put a little bit of um, bend in the fingers just so that I know where those joints are. I'll see later when I start to, you know, sculpt out a hand. I always think that this part isn't long enough, but I think it is. It's just it's so foreshortened from the front that it's hard to tell.
I'm pushing the head in. Adrian is asking, do I specialize in creatures? Um, for most of my career I did, yes. Um, I guess we're still my career I do. It's my the last game that I worked on was a aliens game, so I got to sculpt some aliens. Um but yeah, so my my start in my career was at um, Legacy Effects, and they hired me because of all the creature work that I had um, in my portfolio. So that's kind of all I had in my portfolio, because <laughs> I really want to do creature work. Um, so yeah, so I started at Legacy Effects um, uh, doing 3D sculpting, but for practical printing. So I was doing 3D printing and rapid prototyping for um, all sorts of projects from stuff like Shape of Water or Pacific Rim or Mandalorian. Um, I also did Underwater, which has some fun, creepy creatures in it. Um, so yeah, so we did, I did prosthetics and stuff as well there. We did prosthetics for, you know, like Suicide Squad or Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, and all that good jazz. Just having fun now sculpting some more anatomy in there before our time is up. And then next week we'll get, we'll dive more deep dive into uh, his anatomy, trying to refine even more of it. But this time this creature doesn't have, you know, a bunch of clothes or accessories and stuff, so the coming weeks is just going to be sculpting some anatomy and some um, brushes that I like to use for detailing and doing all that type of stuff and talking about like form and um, coming up with, especially with this one where it's like coming up with anatomy is going to be interesting as well. Not coming up with anatomy, but saying, you know, what's realistic and what, what do I need to push and pull? Um, to get it to start feeling like it's believable, still realm of fantasy, you know, still functional. You want to make it feel like it can move, you know. <laughs> yeah, can't afford all the fans, those that fancy fancy stuff. Not after crypto, he lost all his money. Such a shame. That's why you had to hop planets and come to, you know, different world. I think I said these were Terrace Major and Myers, but they're they're not. Because technically it's up here. This is the scapula. Yeah, it's a lower cost of living. Look, when there's nothing on Mars, it's cheap, you know? Living on Mars is like living in Kansas or something. Sorry if you live in Kansas. That's not what I meant. <laughs> just, you know, planes. It's just planes. I'm gonna try to find the right level of muscular, but also getting that cool bony structure. I think a lot of people tend to make things probably too skinny. I mean, this guy's skinny, but I think the important thing is, and we'll probably beef him up a little later too, um, once we start blending muscles. I like to just kind of start skinny, so I know where all the musculature is going and slowly start adding, you know, those oblique muscles and figuring out where all that stuff goes. 
it's easier to kind of for me to kind of bulk up and to carve in. A lot of my sculpting anatomy is just going to be using this uh, clay build-up tool to kind of I sculpt in the direction of the anatomy that I'm looking for, and then uh, we'll refine it later. I'm also trying not to work too fast on this first episode. When I start sculpting though, I just tend to work a lot faster. I think part of it's just obviously that I have a lot of experience with sculpting this type of stuff, so I'll save a lot of the good stuff for other episodes, but sculpting anatomy is uh, it's my jam. I love it. Not as good as some other artists, but I still like doing it. <laughs> I think we're going to give him a tail as well. So he is like the world's smallest butt right now. And it's really funny. Really big hips, but like really tiny little butt. Kind of doesn't make any sense. Almost looks like a frog. Frogs have a really cool back leg anatomy. Oh, uh, Kaisato is asking. Um, when I make creatures, do I just keep in mind functional anatomy or just what looks good? I think there's like a good balance. Um, if you're not thinking of functionality, then your creatures aren't going to look like they can move, right? Um, but because we're also, you know, it's movie magic, they, they will move because we tell them to, right? Because of movie magic, but you don't want to, it's all about suspending disbelief, right? So if I can make uh, the audience believe that he can and has all the muscles to, you know, stretch and fly and do all that, then, you know, I did my job correctly. Um, so I think a lot of it is about that, you know, there's a fine line between suspending disbelief for your characters and for your audience um and then you know being too functional is detrimental because then you don't come up with really weird stuff right um if you look at an artist like say vague um that guy comes up with the weirdest anatomy and the weirdest creatures um because he and he has beautiful anatomically structured creatures but he takes anatomy and you know the morph uh, morphizes it and turns it into something else, um, which is pretty cool. So, yeah, there's always like a very fine balance between the two. Um, you have to kind of go back and forth. And if you don't know actual anatomy, then you're not going to be able to come up with something interesting or come up with something functional. Because all those shapes lay, you know, the, the groundwork. For this stuff you know and even now like i'll probably you know when the stream is done for reference for next week i'll go and grab some you know look up some bats look up some bird anatomy you know and try to be inspired by what you see out there Turning into like almost demonic fairy kind of vibes. <laughs>
I get that head shape to feel. I'm just playing around with something. As you can see how you can easily like push and pull stuff and be like, does this work or does it not? And if it doesn't, you can just go back and be like, nah. I just feel like I'm missing something in its head. If I don't like the connection point, that's the biggest reason why I'm like, all right, what am I, what can I do? Because I just felt like his connection point to his neck wasn't super interesting. I'm looking at the silhouette too and trying to see. a difference. But yeah, I'll keep I'll keep kind of messing with stuff like this in 3D. Um and it helps a lot to try to figure out like what you know like what's gonna make your character look really interesting or weird. I think one of the biggest problems I'm having with most of this right now is that his ears um, compete a lot for, for anything else. So it's one of those things that I'm like, I'll probably have to either, um, you know, I have to choose the ears over coming up with um, anything else. Because I think any other shape that I'm putting in there feels like um it's competing so and again maybe that's where i just need to yep, start figuring out other things to make this more More of a breakup on his head. See, that didn't, it's not messing with the forms of of making the ear the primary structure, but now I can do something fun in the back with it and not have to worry about it being like a head shape. tail from this. Again, kind of give it like bird vibes.
fur totally changes it, right? So I think I think that's the other thing too is um, another thing that I usually recommend to, to students or to people who are designing stuff is like get get everything in there or start adding certain things to it, and you'll start realizing what's um, you know what's missing. Now I can pinch this along the back. Right now we're getting something very weird, but very fun. I hope. <laughs> That's the hope. far with just a diamond mesh too but um before i go too too much farther i would probably take this and run a z remesh um on it that's after i would you know go in here and sculpt a bit more of the hands and stuff sure that palm pad is in front of the knuckles. And we'll add all sorts of fun little... I could probably spend a whole session just working on hands. I think I've said that before. Maybe I will. Who knows? are always tricky for sure and this is also where you know at a certain point i mean i'm just having fun but like at a certain point you definitely want to stop and look up you know reference um you know right now i'm picturing there's like a eye eye creature who has like really cool like gross spindly hands um so I definitely want to take that and use that as reference for, you know, like what I'm trying to build. Pretty Rikialis muscle. Where your form isn't just a cylinder. And the flat part on the other side of your arm. So you can feel your bone on the other side. I'm always, you know, I'm always sculpting with the flow of the anatomy and trying to figure out, you know, where 
where it makes sense, where it goes, think about insertion points, which are basically where, you know, where does the muscle insert into either, you know, another muscle like a tendon or um, into a bone, you know. Kind of adjusting once you figure out where those muscles go and stuff you can start really moving those insertion points into where they actually you know insert into the muscle and you'll start to get a, a better feel of um, your anatomy so I like to like you know this tricep I know goes up into here and then goes way up into here so you can just pull it all the way up into there and then redynamesh it and now you have something a little more accurate to work with. I find that's easier than trying to like carve in there with a, you know, a standard brush or something. Just pulling it in. And you could run even, you know, an inflate on it to get that little overlap, which is really nice. So when you dynamesh it, it'll look pretty good. And you can just go in and kind of adjust that stuff and make it a little bit more organic. There will be all these like kind of bumpy bits, but then you still want to pay attention to that silhouette, right? So, still paying attention to um, those bony landmarks and, and making sure that that silhouette feels nice. And muscles are falling off in the right places. Because even though we have a bunch of complex anatomy, we still want to make sure that our, you know, our anatomy feels good. Or our silhouette feels good, that's what I meant, sorry. Let me pull all this down and give them more of a neck. find the right is he supposed to be like super hunched over or is he supposed to be you know more upright oh there's a mast area let's see the head's going crazy back first But we could still do the whole uh, like a weird inflaty thing that pops out. I still think that would be kind of fun. Um, but again, we can do that as like a blend shape. So literally, we can come up with where it's going to be. We can do it even now. One last thing before I call it a day. We store a wharf target. Then we do that thing again. Okay. 
right? So if he does something uh, weird like that. And then he puffs up. <laughs> and maybe he opens up his mouth and he looks all terrifying. But it could be something where, you know, if we look at this, uh, it comes maybe out from in between the sternocleidomastoid, so then we have like really cool, gross, like wrinkly kind of detail, and then we can inflate it up um, to basically look like that, which could be kind of fun. Um, yeah, it's like a frog, you know? Again, the more you can combine to like weird things, the better. I'll switch it for now and we can leave it as is. I think that's all I've got for today. So, um, again, if you enjoy watching these live streams, go ahead and tune on in next week. Um, I will be here, hopefully, as long as I don't have any weird neck pain. Should be good to go. Um, and yeah, thanks for tuning in. Again, this was Archetype. If this is your first time just kind of peeking in and lurking. I hope you enjoyed. Um, I do this every way time, and uh, we'll just continue working on this character for a few weeks, and then, you know, I always like to go in and pose it and do all that stuff. So we will uh, we'll keep at it, and we'll get into all the fun, wrinkly detailing and all that good stuff. Uh, maybe this time we can, because I don't think it'll take me that long. Maybe we can pose it and throw it into um, Marmoset to like get a cool render or something out of it. Um, and if that's the case, maybe I'll actually use fiber mesh or like real fur. So we will, uh, we'll play with it. We'll see how it goes. But yeah, thanks for joining me and I'll see you guys next time. All right. Take care. Bye.